And now, enjoy a life rich with results on The Rich Life with Anita Rich. Hi, I'm Anita Rich and welcome to The Rich Life. I'm really excited to be coming to you live from Sunset Gower. This is going to be a journey. We're going to have fun. We're going to just be absolutely crazy, zany over the top. And we're going to get you lots and lots of information. I'm a real estate broker of many years. I'm also an investor, a mom of three, and should I tell you, English is my third language. I'm going to lean on that a lot because I say crazy off the top things, and I say things that people go like, huh? And then by the time they say, "ha," huh, I can figure out what it really is. But the point <laughs> is that this is going to be a show about you. A really dear friend of mine told me recently that, what does everybody in life want? They want health, happiness, all kinds of good relationships, all kinds, money, money, let's not forget money, and to live a stress-free life. Well, I can tell you, since I've had a career of 30 years, oh my God, what are people going to say when I say this? The life that I live now is a little bit more stressful because of all the balls and chains we have. Yeah, we used to have pagers. Yeah, I know you guys don't even know what that is. But we used to have pagers. We didn't have cell phones, but we had a lot of quarters jingling in our pockets. Why? Because we have to go find a phone, a phone booth. Yes, I know, not just Superman comes out of it. A phone booth is something that really existed. Now, I had a cell phone way before my time. But I needed to hire a little person to walk around because the case was twice the size of my head. The cell phone was actually the size of my head. And faxes? Oh my gosh. Okay, I have to share this. I, I, I'm sorry. I hope I'm not losing you, but I have to share this. The very first fax that we got, my partner came up to me and she said, look at this. They put it in wrong. The paper was upside down. But that's the way it came through. And we looked at it and we went, oh my goodness, this is ridiculous. They don't know how to fax. So we're talking about a generation of innovation, technology, and fun. I'm here to tell you that I've had lots of careers. My most successful one has always been real estate. But the reality is, as recently as this morning, somebody said, you know nothing about radio. You know nothing about coaching. So what are you doing? So at first I thought, hmm, I took it as a negative and a very dear friend of mine, who you're gonna meet pretty soon, <laughs> she said, it's not a negative, it's a total positive. Because let me tell you, I was pissed off. <laughs> Why? Yes. Because I thought, you're going to tell me that I can't do something just because I haven't done it before? Really? Okay, so if you see the live feed, you'll see I'm white. But that doesn't mean I'm not a minority. Because <laughs> I was a minority. I was born in Budapest, Hungary. I went through a revolution. I had three children. I got a divorce. I had a lot of money. I had no money. And now you'll get where I'm coming from. I've learned to have a life that's rich and full. And I've learned to surround myself with people who mean something to me. People who I could support and who support me. And everything I learned along the way is what's going to make this show as wonderful as I manage, bleh, as I imagined it to be. All right, it's my first show. I'm allowed to do one of those. That's the last one. And so it's going to depend on what you want. What do you want from me? I want you to have a rich life, which is what I have today. But what do you want from me? Do you want me to talk to you about real estate? I can do that all day long. Should I talk about motherhood? I have three daughters and one gorgeous grandson. Should I talk about the ups and downs of having money and not having money? Been there, done that. I hope that this becomes a show about you. What is it that I can empower you with? What is it that I can cheerlead you with? And that's what The Rich Life is about. I hope you'll join me. <laughs> yeah. And now, nice. and now I want to introduce my first guest. Okay, so my first guest is a really, really dear woman who you just heard an hour ago or 10 minutes ago or four minutes ago. <laughs> Sorry, I lose track of time. Her name is Jenna Edwards and you all know and love her. And it's really Jenna's fault that I'm here. <laughs> or I will take all the blame. Okay, so it's actually all the accolades go to Jenna because I met her years ago doing something that was near and dear to both of our hearts, and that is volunteering. Yes. I'm very big on giving back to the community because without that, the rich life doesn't exist. And what I did was 
there was something in Jenna and something in me that talked to each other way before we even knew the other existed. And Jenna and I just slowly over many, many years just built a friendship. When she had a question, she would come to me. When I had a question, I would go to her. Long story short, she told me about a venture she was involved with. She wanted to buy a $5 million uh, <laughs> building. I was very excited. I'm already I counting know. the commission. I know. And she said, okay, not yet, but you know what? I believed in her dream. I didn't laugh at her. I didn't say, hello, why don't you start with a $500,000 building and build your way up? And she said, no, I'm going to start with a $5 million building. <laughs> just not today. So I'm not just cashing not that check just yet. However, my relationship with Jenna blossomed so that we are also doing another thing, and that is we joined Toastmasters. Yeah. So <laughs> without any further ado, Jenna, if the, there's new listeners out there or your old friends, say hi. Hi, guys. Thank you. Aww. Okay, first of all, you can go blah as much as you want because that intro was amazing. Amazing. I'm so excited that you're here. I'm so excited. Hi, everyone listening. I hope that you are my fans because <laughs> that would be amazing. And I hope that if you aren't, you're going to become my fans because I'm on right before Anita, who is one of the most wonderful, amazing brilliant women I've ever met and I'm excited that you have your own show and I'll take all the blame thank you and so <laughs> so I just don't all know how it. it works in radio land because I'm new to it so when you say something like that like how much does that cost <laughs> um five million dollars so I can buy my building oh yay okay well at least I'll get a commission check back out <laughs> that's right <laughs> um and then the person that I really want to introduce you to because you all know how wonderful Jen is is also a very, very dear friend. As a matter of fact, she's my date anytime from <laughs> 9 to 11 at night. Why? Because very often when my husband's not home or I have someone to talk to or I need to have someone to talk to, I know that my darling, darling love of my life, Gina St. John, will pick up the phone. <laughs> she may say, what do you want? Are you crazy? It's 10 o'clock. And I go, come off. You're not going to sleep till noon anyways <laughs> being her midnight my noon uh 12 hours later so gina is i uh, am well, you probably have heard of her before i've seen her she's been on numerous television shows uh she actually was in e-entertainment which she'll tell you so radio is nothing for her for me i'm like i can't use those words i was gonna say scared sh that word um but you, you know you can it's internet radio is it really swear I'm away my shitless. friend <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> So definitely I can tell you that, um, oh, let me just backtrack. So when we were at Toastmasters, Jenna was telling me about this amazing meeting she went to um, with this guy whose name is Dominic. Roush. He is the Sicilian mentor. Oh, no, that's Maurice. Okay, so Maurice is, uh, sorry, Maurice, I, I, if you're listening, I apologize in advance. <laughs> He's in Japan, so. Oh, phew. He could yeah. Be in Japan. That's true. Oh, Shout my. out to all the Japanese listeners. Woo! <laughs> so basically, she gave me this book to read, which I read from 11 o'clock till 1 a.m. last night, because the show's today. When would I have read it? I've only had the book for a week. It is brilliant, and it's fabulous. And one of the things, and of course, he talks about public speaking, which we know is a little different than this. And one of the things he talked about is among the number one fears that people in the world have is public speaking. Mm -hmm. So I thought, how cool. Like, I'm sitting here petrified. I know that you think I'm making it up, but I'm not. I'm sitting here petrified, and I'm doing this, and I'm just feeling so empowered that if just any one person listening today says, holy cow, she's not exactly 21. She's not the thinnest in the world. Um, <laughs> she could use a little bit of work. No! But, oh, my God. Oh, whatever. So besides that, I'll pay you too. So besides <laughs> that, you know, how come she thinks she can take something on that she's never done before? which was my conversation with a very dear friend this morning. Why are you doing this? You know nothing about radio. And I thought, that's why. Uh, that's exactly why. And that's why. why I love you, by the way. So because I also digress, I don't know if I have ADD. I don't think I want to find <laughs> out. But getting back to the love of my life is a woman who I've got the great fortune to also partner up with in real estate. Yep, beautiful actors have second jobs. And she's not a waitress. Duh. <laughs> and she makes a lot of money and she makes a lot of people happy. So without any further ado, I would like to introduce my dear friend and guest for today, Gina St. John. Oh, thank you. Thank you. And thank you for letting me be one of the first guests on your show. 
I mean, I, I was so thrilled when you invited me, and I knew you were all excited about doing radio. You're fantastic, by the way. Mm -hmm. You are a natural. And for those of you who are uh, just tuning in and and to this radio station for the first time, yeah. I doubt they have, because I'm sure they know you, Jen. Well, maybe. Yeah. I hope. Yeah, yeah I, know, I know they know you. Um, but you're certainly tuning in to The Rich Life for the first time, and you are in for a treat. An yeah. absolute treat. Um, Anita's right. We've been friends for a long time, but we're also business partners. And no, thanks to her, I'm not. I wasn't the actress waiting tables. I'm also a real estate agent and very good at it. Extraordinary, <laughs> may I add? Very good at it. But I'm very good at it because I've had people around me like you mm. who've been able to train and inspire and show how it's done to make not just real estate but life a wonderful experience. And it's one of the things that, that seriously, everyone that works with the Rich Group yeah. and, and her team learns. It's, it's, it's not simply, yeah, you gotta make the sale. Yes, you need to build your client base. Yes, you need to, to you know join this organization and there could possibly be a lead there for business. It's, yes, you need to live your life. Yes, you need to give back to the community. Yes, you need to inspire others. And, and that is something that you live by and you've been doing with all of us for years. So I'm really thrilled that you've taken this particular format, you know, radio, internationally known now, to get out to the world and say, hey, if you have something you want to achieve, if there's a life that you want to lead and live truly to its fullest, to its richest, that they can spend the time with you and learn how to do that. So thank you so much for including me in your first show mm -hmm. where you will be influencing so many people to do so many great things. Yay! Uh that was amazing. <laughs> and I have to say, like, on my show right before yours today, I was talking about surrounding yourself with inspiring people and inspiration in general. And I brought Anita up and I wasn't just saying it because she was coming on afterwards. She really is, like you're saying, one of those people who lives the talk. Walks the talk. Walks the talk. Walks the walk. Yeah. Walks the walk. Thank Walks you. Walks the walk. Lives Talks, the talk. Yeah. You know, she just she does it, and 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 this is proof positive that we're we're not full of full of it because you you are scared. I mean, we've talked about it before, but you're doing a fantastic <laughs> you job. Oh yeah. You're like so good at it, and you know why? Because you're not lying. You're just authentic. You're just saying what you do, and that's key. And you're I can't wait for the people listening to get into this show more and more. You're gonna you're gonna affect so many people. I think it's funny, we're all sitting here talking about, oh, Anita's so wonderful, she's so this, she said that. I know that uh, anyone listening might be under the, the assumption that we're we're brought in here to praise her. But the truth of the matter, you know, honestly. I know, that's She has not paid me for this yet. And I'm really yet. not going yet. to either. I yet. said yet, I'm gonna, ah. yeah. Girl, please, one thing you taught me is make it profitable. But, um, <laughs> What, what is true is that she loves to share. And if you are listening right now, you will be empowered and your life will be enriched. And it is because she does truly intend for you to succeed. Now, to say all that, she's braving this. And I do mean you are brave to be able to be in this particular place right now to share this. So thank you so much. Now, I want to find out from you, because I... I, I, I you all, you know I'm just setting y'all up because you know I know. I've known her for a long time. <laughs> but I'm going to ask this like it's all new to me. I want to find out from you when you decide to get into real estate and what your life was like. And I'm not saying this for everyone to get into real estate, but to find out where you can start from and still be incredibly successful. How, how did this come about for you? Oh, it started with a nightmare. Um, I was in a bit of a dysfunctional marriage, uh -huh. and uh, the guy who sold us our house said, um, you got the gift of gab, you gotta do real estate. And I went, <laughs> my husband won't let me out of his sight for 12 seconds, so mm. that's not gonna work. Yeah. And then he went and talked to my husband, my ex-husband rather, and um, and it just kind of happened where I would sneak out to take out clients, because it wasn't <laughs> something that was allowed to be part of my day. Well, anyone knowing real estate, and of course in those days, I repeat, there was no internet, no cell phones, no fax machines. Uh, it was really kind of interesting of how we even did a deal. But I, I used to have to sneak it, like on the side. But real estate allowed me to be 100% me. Uh -huh. um, in other words, I was very honored that somebody who's one of their largest investments, unless it's the largest investment, is mm -hmm. their home. And you know, in those days, I mean, I'm going back 30 years, I started 30 years ago. In those days, what we did was we called it pride of ownership. 
Today, people buy a house and they go, what can I get for it in six months? Right. What can I get for it in three minutes? Like, that's really what it's about today. But that wasn't the case then. And so somebody wanting to make their life, wanting to make their memories in a home would call us. And that was so on, you know, that was just so, like, like I would think, why would you call me? I'm like a Hungarian refugee. Hello, English is my third language. I speak with malaprops and you're calling me. So it 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 really made me step up my game. What's a malaprop? I know, it's just gonna okay, say it's a word. English is our third language and I'm like, huh? I know. She, <laughs> and she throws out these okay. multisyllabic. It's, okay, don't be funny. So that's the only big word I know, okay? Uh -huh. And what it means is something that sounds the same but doesn't mean the same. Right. Oh. Because I learned English through commercials. Okay, I, I'm sorry, I have to share this. I've been married now for 19 years to my second husband, my soulmate, the love of my life. Yeah, I'm second. He's so adorable. <laughs> I'm second to him. No, he is fantastic. Herb, we love you. We know you're listening. Yes. Oh, we love you. And he really helped me raise three children. And he came into my life when my youngest was seven. My middle daughter was about 11, 11 and a half, and my oldest was 17. That's tough. Yeah, and you know what? He's not even an alcoholic, but you, I wouldn't have been surprised <laughs> oh. if he was. Uh. Don't worry, I'll get him a drink when we get oh, back. There you like, go. He's sweating right now, going, oh, what is she going to say? But that's okay. Yeah, he probably is. So he probably will listen to it later after a drink. And basically, <laughs> he's the one who said, he said, just speak with malaprops. And I'm like, Wikipedia, they're not always right. Webster's Dictionary, <laughs> nobody has one anymore. So I called a couple of people and, I, and they said, well, what's a malaprop? And well, what happened is, when I, when I came... I started speaking English at the age of nine. So wow. what I was allowed to do was watch television. So my parents didn't have to, you know, deal with me too much. So I watched <laughs> lots of television and I memorized the commercials because those were the only things that would repeat themselves. Like it was hard to learn from a show. Oh, but the commercials were the same thing. Okay, maybe this is embarrassing, but here goes. After 30 years, well, more than 30 years later, but after a 19-year marriage, my husband still cracks up because in the morning... I'm singing, well, A.D. Do is not on now, but I'm definitely, yeah, A.D. Do was the plumber. Uh, but I'm definitely <laughs> I'm singing. I'm lost, but go ahead. I'm <laughs> definitely singing the commercials on television in the morning during the morning show of um, 588-2300 Empire. <laughs> oh, oh, carpeting. And I that um, that's funny. That that's actually funny. really funny. But thank you for explaining what a malaprop is. I needed yes. that. Okay, so that so I do speak with malaprops, and if you call me on it right away, if I take a second, I usually can tell you. Oh yeah, it's that word. We were just doing the malaprop thing then when you we were trying to say she walks the walk and she yes. talks the talk. Yeah. But we didn't quite get it out, so we had said it wrong. But we had an intention and it got across. But, but walk talk. Yeah, yeah similar. And and it's we don't malaprop. have the excuse. Of no, it being, I know. Yeah. Four and four. We it's don't. too bad. I, I just screwed it up. I will confess that. But I, I, I will write a book. I'll tell you what I'll write a book about. And it's not going to be sold. It's just going to be emailed to all my friends. So get ready. <laughs> and the book will actually be about things that are kind of similar but not right on. Like, for example. All malaprops. Yeah. Like I say, I say, you know, well, you know, he just has sour apples. Then my husband looks at me as what? <laughs> He's got sour grapes. Now, excuse me, a fruit is a fruit, right? By any other I, name, it's oh, still no, just a fruit. No. And then I think the one, and, and, he, and he's going to start writing them down, so I'll have an anecdote to say. Mm -hmm. But one of the things I also say is, you know what? It's when the road raises up to meet the rubber, and he falls over. He goes, you can't oh. even have made that up. Yeah, it's the rubber meets the road. I mean, I finally had to practice it to say it right. So that's what I mean by saying crazy things. But you know what? Let me get back to, because nobody wants to hear about my crazy life. So let me get <laughs> actually, oh, I, that's I definitely exactly do. why But I do want to find out how you got to this fun, crazy life versus the one that I know that you had. Okay, so before I tell you that, let me just tell you that I called the very dear friend yesterday at 12 o'clock and I said, I'm freaking out. I, I don't know how to do this. I'm a trainer and a mentor. But then I get in, in front of groups of large people you know, number of people, and I talk about the one thing that I know very well inside and out, and that's real estate. And I'm comfortable, and I just need a little bit of water from time to time, and I'm good to go. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. So you today, go. actually yesterday, I'm going, oh my God. And so I said to my friend, do me a favor, and just go over this with me. Like, I, 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 I'm going to get tongue-tied. How do I start? So it probably took her five minutes to have me repeat, my name is Anita Rich. <laughs> <laughs> No, no, seriously. My name is Anita Rich. That's me she's talking about. Oh, God. I didn't know if you wanted to be known. So then, <laughs> then she said, okay, you're being really ridiculous. You're rehearsing for something where you know that there's a lot of things in life you have to rehearse for. 
this is not one of them. You really are better in life and in real estate just talking and shooting from the hip and telling it like it is. And I'm like, no, no, I need the first three sentences. So then I decided I was famished and I had to eat something. And I said, let me call you back in a half an hour. We'll do this. Ten minutes later, I get a call from my brother that he was taking my mom out for Chinese food. She tripped and fell and broke her nose. Oh, my gosh. So I called Gina back and I go, mm, this is not going to happen. I can't do it. It's going to be whatever it is. I got to go deal with my mom. I come home 10 o'clock last night thinking, should I call her? Should I not call her? And then I thought, you know, I'll just go to sleep and get up early in the morning. Well, as you know, and as I've said, I'm a real estate broker. I have a very large team called The Rich Group. What else? And the phone started ringing at 8 a.m. We got an offer on this one, and this one needs that. And everything that you could imagine happened this morning. <laughs> so I thought, well, I'll do it with her in the car. But in the car, we had yeah. to have our coffee. Oh, and, yeah. you know, we had to <laughs> chat about girl talk. Oh, yeah. So what I'm going to tell you is that I promise from all this rambling, I am now going to get really serious. This is my serious voice. Oh, don't even try this. <laughs> no, I'm going to be serious. You realize that we're here. Yeah. It's our job not to let that happen. No, it's <laughs> never. Girl, please. Yeah, no. No, the serious part is that when I think about why I'm even here this morning, it's really because I've been up, I've been down. I'm sure there's a song about that too, and my jingles, I probably would know it. But I really <laughs> feel that whether you're a mom at home thinking, oh my God, could they just grow a little faster? Is there a growth hormone so I can get out? Whether you're doing a job that you don't really love, but you've told yourself, or somebody gave you the belief that you have to do it because you can't do anything else, or that, oh my goodness, to keep up this lifestyle, you're selling your soul for a salary versus happiness. Whatever the reason, I'm here to tell you that you can do it all. My dad, who passed away when I was pretty, pretty young, he was about 35 years old, he said to me, honey, there's nothing you can't do unless you have a physical limitation. So the only thing we're ever limited by is our own mind, our belief system, and our thoughts. And as Jen earlier pointed out, by what the people in your world say to you. And this is what somebody said, and I didn't understand this for a long time. I know, I won't tell you again that English is my third language. <laughs> oh, I just did. This is what someone pointed out to me. They said, you know, you're only limited by your own limitations. And show me your friends, and I'll tell you who you are. Oh, interesting. Mm -hmm. That's really interesting. And I thought, well, why would that matter? Well, because, you know, here goes another one. Feathers, of, flocks of a feather, birds, birds of a feather, of a feather flock, flock together. together. I'm, she really, I'm close. <laughs> she even tries no. them. She goes for it. I and try. she knows she doesn't know how to get there, but she's going to get I know. I was yeah. just going to say, that's what I love so much about yeah. you. Yeah. Like, you just do it. You know, you're just you're just a Go doer. ahead. We got that malaprop down right now, girl. Yep. Okay, so but here's the deal. birds of a feather, you're right. Well, see, but, but here's the deal. The reason I can get away with stuff like that is because... Look at you and look at you. I look cute. at you and look at you. You're cute and you're I, blonde, that's why. No, it's because <laughs> I align myself with people with a high level of consciousness who may make fun, but I make fun of myself, so I don't really need you to. <laughs> Did you take a note of that? I don't really. No. And, so I do make fun of myself, and you know, and I don't take things personally or seriously. And I'm very fortunate. I live with a man who just recently retired, and he was. He was an agent at William Morris, and then he had his own company called Life Management, and maybe that's where my name is Rich, and he's Life, and so there's the Rich Life. I just thought of that. Oh. Um, she wow. just okay. did. I yeah. do know this. Yeah. That I just, is I true. just thought of that. Yeah. So in any event, he is the man who really taught me a lot about don't take yourself that seriously because nobody else does. Yeah. And one of the best things that I learned going through a very difficult divorce was Every time you think about something, and this has nothing to do with a divorce, this could be a relationship, this could be a client, this could be anything in life. If you can work it out with that person, by all means, do so. That's what it's all about. However, if you can't, don't let them live rent-free in your mind. Oh, I like that. That's a good one. And so at first I, I think, think that you can apply that to yourself too. If there's parts of yourself that you can't live with, don't let them live rent-free in your mind. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, going back to that, I say solve it, resolve it, or let it go. I love it. And evict them. Mm -hmm. I have become a landlord to so many different things in my mind lately. Yeah. <laughs>
and an attorney somewhere out there is making a lot of money with the eviction process. That's so, very you know. funny. I like that's that. Very that's funny. a good one. Well, hey, <laughs> only my divorce attorney did, but that. But we'll move on from there for now. <laughs> it was worth it. That eviction was fantastic. <laughs> out of my mind, out of my home. But you went through that too. And you know, yeah, out of my home, right? So basically, um, hmm, yeah, interesting. So about three years after I I got divorced, um, I couldn't afford my mortgage. Why? Well, 1994 happened, and we had an earthquake in which you couldn't give a house away. I actually thought of giving a gift certificate. Here's your house. Here's the key. Here's a gift certificate. I would take your house. I would take the earthquake gift certificate. or not, man. Her house is amazing. Oh, thank you. And so, so basically, what happened is I moved out of the house. Uh, now remember, I had three le- little kiddos on my back, and um, and things were tough for a long time. But you know, I don't really want to share with you. Oh, things were tough because everybody has something in their life that was tough. It's what do you do with that? So I became a seeker, and I went probably to every spiritual, sometimes even religious place to just see if there was a message there. And I've also been a seminar junkie in my real estate career because I always feel that if I can walk away with just one thing, either one thing new or something that I've forgotten, because Mm -hmm. there's so many things in life. You know, people say, after 30 years, I mean, I just came back from Seattle. I went to a luxury, international luxury estate seminar. And the week before, I was in Utah meeting some top agents. And of course, I like to travel too. That's why I work so I can travel. (laughs) And I'll make any excuse. So, if you want me, call me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm only an airplane ride away. And so basically at the end of the day, I realized that, you know, I'm I'm gonna be okay. I picked up my children, moved out of the house, took on all kinds of jobs. I'm a certified masseuse. I worked in my girlfriend's dress shop. And every time I sold something, I got on the phone. I just made a sale. I just sold the $70 <laughs> blouse. Oh, I sold the $120 pair of pants. And she goes, um, honey, I don't know how to tell you this. And I go, what, what, what am I doing wrong? She goes, I'm trying to take the day off. <laughs> <laughs> and that's why you're working. Could what? you stop calling me every two minutes that you made a sale? I'll see you at the end of the day. But I'm calculating like I'm ga- getting, you know, $10 an hour and I'm getting 3% on everything I sell. So it just basically, it just basically reiterated to me that is reiterated. One of those words I can't pronounce. It just really kind of, told me that you know you can you can get by because really as far as I'm concerned I can only sleep in one bed every night and most of the time three meals a day that's good with a couple of snacks if I took 50% of the clothes out of my closet today I promise you most likely I would never know they're gone (laughs) and I just think that Today that I am living the rich life to which I hope to gear this whole show and segment to is because I was able to live those other lives. Now, we can call it whatever we want. We can call it an experience. We can call it anything. But for me, it was a life of learning. And I think until the last day, you know, when it's time to, you know, nail that last nail in the car. Hold on. I think there's one more (laughs) seminar, one more message out there that I have to hear. (laughs) And that's what I think I want to impart, that it doesn't matter how young or how old you are. We all, okay, well, I'm, I'm a baby boomer generation. And what do, you, what do they call the new people? The millennium people? Oh, there's like 12 different steps. Or the steps. XY yeah. factor? There's generation X, generation Y, you know, y there's then the, the millennials. millennials. Yeah. Okay, well, anyways, I'm the first one. I'm the baby boomer. And <laughs> they used to say we were born because there was nothing else to do. I, I, I resemble that remark, but <laughs> and, and I know that I said that on purpose. Um, and basically, our generation was really, really interesting. I'm very fortunate to have my mother, the 83-year-old who broke her nose yesterday, around because she is such a wealth of information for me. Of, you know, she grew up in Budapest, Hungary. We left during 1956 during the Russian Revolt, and she had a five-year-old that she. Oh, I just said my age. Crap. Uh, she had a five-year-old, you know. As long scrap. as you don't say ours. We're all happy. <laughs> I don't know yours. Um, and so, so, you know, so basically she had to start a whole new life um, in Vienna. We literally, I know this sounds like, you know, get the violin, but we literally walked. We were caught the first time. The second time we escaped, we walked to Vienna where we lived for two years. Uh, hence English, my second language, in case you wondered. And then went to Canada Uh, which was my third language. But basically, I'm looking at a woman who made a whole life 
as a refugee. Now, to this day, she doesn't speak very good English. She speak like this, and then goodness, she's not listening to the show because she would say, shut up, Anita. <laughs> <laughs> Which is usually the response I get. Yes, Zsa Gabor, the Hungarian accent. So, but she basically taught me that an obstacle is an opportunity. Mm. Something that didn't work out the way you want it to is an opportunity. A desire, a desire of your heart is an opportunity. So what, what stops us? What limits us? Gina, if you really had something you were dying to do tomorrow, is there anything that would limit you? Nothing in reality except for what could be going on between my two ears. Absolutely nothing can truly stop you if you want to do it. But of course, that's one of the things you've always said. Well, thank you. Uh, did I? But I really, you know, I, I really think that because of the way I was raised, that, you know, what we were taught and what I was taught was when you see it, you'll believe it. My philosophy today is if I believe it, I can create it and then I'll see it. So I've really taken and put a spin on what could be. And you know what? I had a lot of demons. I'm sure I still do. And a lot of belief systems that I had to pull out of the, you know, this, this brain, whatever it's called. And at the end of the day, I realized that what does everybody want? They want good relationships. They want money. They want to have wealth. They want to have wealth of heart. They want everything that everybody else can have. If you're willing to open up and be a part of the rich life. So, <laughs> do people call in, write in? I've always wanted to know. They can. They you can. know what? Yep. I, if, if anybody has got an opportunity, we're going to call it that today, right? <laughs> you know how yes. your, your washer and dryer just broke? It's an opportunity. <laughs> <laughs> or you may have had a fight with your significant other. It's, it's an opportunity. And I would say you can call Anita. You can email Anita. And we you can, can join the chat. Yeah. Go to ubnradio.com and click on the chat icon and join us here on the show and we will help work out your opportunity or at least change whatever it is that you're going through into an opportunity because that's what you do i knew i do you. know that that's yeah. what you no, do it's amazing so what i started to tell you guys is that jenna and i met at the charity of my of, of my choice that speaks to my heart i'm on the board of directors and it is called we spark w-e yep. capital s-p-a-r-k and it's we spark.org I talk about it all the time on oh, the show. Oh, you do? Yeah, I just talked about the run walk. Oh, yay. Do. Okay. So here's the deal. Uh, a little wonderful little young actress by the name of Wendy Jo Sperber oh. did a show with Tom Hanks. Called and Bosom Buddies. Called Bosom Buddies. One of Buddies. the best shows ever made. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I had the fortune of meeting her before she passed away. She already had cancer. And um, a very dear friend of hers, Arthur Turetsky, is also a very dear friend of mine. She was at his house, and Arthur said, oh, what I would give if I could have Anita on the board of directors. And Wendy looked at me, and she looked at Arthur, and, and she said, well, why is that? And he goes, oh, you know, because she's kind of like a pit bull with a bone. <laughs> like, just if, if, if we gave her something like this, she would really throw herself into it. And Wendy said, is that something you'd consider? And I got to tell you, to this day, you really want something and you think that I can help you get it and you ask me for it, I make the time. So anybody out there who knows me personally and says, oh, yeah, yeah, sure, but you're so busy, not true. Yes, I am so busy. But anytime somebody calls and says, hey, you know, I need to meet with you for breakfast or lunch, ask them. I've got a long list of resumes of people who say, yes, she shows up. So the next thing I knew is... She showed is, up for me. Oh, She showed you. up for everyone listening right now. Yeah. Woo! Woo! Thank you. <laughs> Just by the skin of my teeth. <laughs> <laughs> and so basically, I became a member of the board of directors of WeSpark, and I've never looked back. It's been an amazing journey. I can call any of my clients who are either dealing with cancer or have a family member dealing with cancer and tell them to either come to any of our meetings. Now, this is 100% nonprofit. Yeah. So that means that every penny we get is from the public. We do Tai Chi, visualization, meditation, yoga. It is unbelievable. It's in the valley on, on uh, Woodman and Ventura. And this Sunday, we're doing the, the annual 5K, 10K run walk. What's beautiful about it is it's on the back lot of Universal Studios. It's so much fun. Have you been? Well, to the back lot of Universal Studios. But not yeah. to the least <laughs> uh, No, I have not. Oh, it's so much fun. It is. It's so neat because you get to literally walk around the sets. Yeah. And 
you're not on a tram so you can walk around you'll get yelled at if you go certain places yes but <laughs> yeah Jenna yeah, I red did flashing light that says don't go in that's no the one you they went have through. a they have a like scary man in a box like all of a sudden I'm in front of Amblin and we're like taking pictures by the logo and the this voice is you can't take pictures here and we're like what the <laughs> like the, it's it's all like green and um vine it has vines all down the front and then this little voice <laughs> box cut out of the greens so we were looking around we're like oh no what's happening oh, no, no, but no, it was no. hilarious and then we got to take pictures in front of mr potato head which was so much fun and we <laughs> walk around wisteria lane and like it was really cool it's it such a fun place to be and i'll be there directing you on where to walk to sign up because i'm volunteering and i'm the yay. parking person yay i do i do it very gregariously there are a lot of arm movements oh no no it's exciting. when i am directing people Inter entertaining. <laughs> entertaining well it's like freaking five o'clock in the morning so <laughs> entertaining with caffeine it is you know you got to get your jolt of caffeine they have five to know. for you eight for us <laughs> oh okay no, you tell them five and everyone just turned their radio off oh my I, gosh i heard the clicks i mean seriously yeah. but listen if you get up that early and you do something amazing like run walk for we spark like you're done at noon and your rest of your freaking day is like the biggest high you feel so good about yeah, yourself and it's, it's such amazing a, it's 11 with you're done at 11 and a 12 year jinkies having uh, you know mimosas but, I mean, really. <laughs> but you're doing you're doing something great for others you're yeah. doing something great for yourself and anybody if they still want to participate can they tell me how? absolutely how just go on um on we spark actually you know what send me an email to anita is rich at gmail.com. That is her direct email, by the way, y'all. Yeah. Anita is I can't believe you just gmail. said that over the, oh my gosh. Yeah, that's, no, that's good. <laughs> she already great. has a million emails in her inbox. What's a million more? Right? So yeah. then you'll be put on her list and you'll get the, the book that she's writing about the word that I can't remember because English is my first language. Ah! <laughs> well, yeah, there Malaprops, is. Malaprops, I'm Malaprops. here. Oh, Malaprops. look at you. Who's listening? <laughs> Who's listening? You know, listening? there will be a book, but the book will only be completed when the listening audience lets me know what their challenges are. Mm. Because I really am doing this so it could be all about you. I've lived it, I've loved it, I've succeeded in doing those challenges. So if I can get, again, if I do this every Monday, once a week, and I just make a difference in one person's life, then this whole time, all this time and energy and effort will have been worth it. If I can help somebody with real estate, that's going to be fantastic. If I can help you with anything at all, that would be wonderful. Wouldn't you say, G? I think it'd be fantastic. I, I do want uh, you to make a small confession here. Okay, uh-oh. Ready? And, 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 and for everyone else who's listening, just so you'll know, I, I have to give her all the credit in the world because she really does uh, walk the walk. Yeah. And she is offering her services to you every Monday to be your personal coach. If you've got something and you want to bring it up and you just want someone else out there to hold your hand a little bit, walk you through it, get you through the upset and then get you on the road to changing that into something that really boosts your life in, in a better and new direction, this is the person. This is the person you can use as that coach. And just to say how important coaching is, how many coaches do you have, Anita? I have two that I pay and then three that are just along for the ride. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm saying. I wanted you to confess. Yeah. You actually do believe in coaching. I do. And, yeah. you, and, you, and she works every week with two different coaches because you have to be able to steer your life in the direction that you want it to go. Mm -hmm. And you often need someone else to help you do it. And, and you've been there helping me and others on your team and agents for years. And now you're helping all of your listeners. And yeah. I want them to know that, you know, you you also benefit from people helping you and coaching you. Thank you. Thank you for that. Let me let me just tell you, um, I thought about this the other day because, you know, again, I don't know if I'm ADD and it really doesn't matter anymore. Don't because believe in that. You're just smart. I know. Well, I don't know about that. But, I, you know, if I could <laughs> finish a busy. sentence. If I could just finish a whole sentence. because No, not because of you, because of me. Because I have another thought. I think, oh, that's boring. Let me get on to the next thought. But basically, if, if, if I decided, like, what would be the perfect day for me for the rest of my life, it would be getting up in the morning, having my trainer there, uh, working out for an hour, Having someone cook me. Well, I do have someone who cooks for me. Herb. Thanks, Herbie. Love you, Herb. Uh, <laughs> having someone cook me an amazing, nutritious, um, 
low-cal breakfast, then taking my dog for a walk, and then I'd be so exhausted from that morning taking a nap. <laughs> well, this is the dream day, so. Yes, yes. and you, then. You gotta add it. Oh, good. And then spending the <laughs> afternoon teaching. It doesn't matter teaching what, how to change a diaper, how to burp a baby. I actually do a really good job on babies. I know this sounds ridiculous, <laughs> and but I really do. You know, some, some mothers are just afraid they're gonna hurt the kid. Um, and no, I don't pound them to death. But you know, there are things that you can do. And whether it's, whether it's about children, certainly, I am a field recognized expert in real estate. Uh, I think I was talking to somebody. I used to be with a major company called Cole Banker for many years. I was an assistant manager there. I opened up my own company for Keller Williams. And I woke up one day and I said, what do I really love to do? And I thought, I love having a team. I love being out there. I love being out in the trenches. I love, I love meeting people. And you know, if you really think about it, people, allow, and this is for both of us, Jay, people really allow us into a very private part of their life. Mm -hmm. We get to see them when they're happy. We get to see them when they're pissed off at each other. I mean, I've had people offer me serious money. I've had a guy, if you're listening, don't worry, I won't say your name. <laughs> I had a guy offer me serious money to talk his wife into a house that he loved so he wouldn't have to buy the house that she loved because he <laughs> knew she was always winning. Huh. So it's wow. an amazing realm that you get into, you know, when their house is messy or neat or the kid is not right. really behaving. Because as a mom, I can tell you, there was a lot of times that my children would be misbehaving. And I wouldn't say, um, oh, you know, excuse me, my kid's a brat. Oh, I'm sorry. He's tired. He's hungry. No. I made up all, I did. I made up all kinds of excuses, except instead of saying, you know, I'm sorry, my child is just misbehaving right now. Because we don't want the world to see what goes on behind closed doors. Yeah. Well, we, in the real estate profession, have a key to that door that the owner of the property has opened for us. But they have to trust us, and that's important. That's and they the trust thing. you. And they trust you. Yeah. And, they, and why? Why do they trust us? Because they know that you really have the best for them as the goal. That is your intention, what's best for them, and to help them achieve something they need and want. But the same thing comes with being on your team. And you know, all the team members and you created a team. People trust you to help them build a career. And here I think people will find that you are one of the most trustworthy people because you actually enjoy their success. And that that's why you teach. You know, the hard thing has been for me over the years, one of my coaches always said, if you're going to hire somebody, only hire people you're willing to fire. And I thought, huh? Hmm. And they said, well, most of us hire people because we like them, not because they're the best person for the job. Ooh, I like that. And I thought, well, that took a long time to really filter in. Yeah, and that makes you know, total and I, sense. And I've had, like in the last 12 months, I had three people on the team that just weren't working. It's interesting. And they're wonderful people. They just weren't working for my goals. Right. It's interesting that you say that because I was um, at a seminar once and it's Dave Ramsey. He does financial. Love him. I love him. Um, and he says it's his job as the owner of the company to fire you if you don't love your job. Wow. Because he doesn't want anybody there who doesn't love their job for the environment that he's creating. But also it's no it does no service to you as the person just punching the clock and you hate your job. So he's like, it's my job to let you go. It's my job to recognize if you're just punching a clock and you're not really fulfilled and then fire you. So for the three people who are no longer part of the rich group, what I just want to say is, please look at it as a favor. Yeah. Trust me, if you loved it, we would be doing well together. If we we're not doing well together, one of the two of us didn't love it. And I got to tell you, I love what I do. People say, oh my goodness, for you, you it's it's like a hobby. You know, yeah. your career is your hobby. And sometimes, like, like I, I've had agents say, oh, I was going to take all of Sunday off, and then I had to go out for an hour and interrupt my day, and I'd go, and what happened? Well, I wrote an offer. Well, what is that going to translate to? And well, 18,000, hmm. Do you want to rethink that? <laughs> wow, your life is all No, I'm just Right. Yeah, <laughs> but, but it's interesting, because on the show before this one, we were talking about becoming, about overcoming overwhelm. And one of the things that I said that was really important was knowing what you wanted in order to go after it. Exactly. And if you don't love what you're doing, why are you wasting your time? And I think that's why I mm. love that you're doing this show because you are 100% not a time waster. If you don't love doing it, you're gone. 
if you True. don't if you see that someone else doesn't love what you're giving them you're going to stop giving it not because you're this horrible person that wants to take stuff away but because you recognize this isn't working for you so you should go find your inspiration somewhere else right yeah you know i had a partner for a couple of years my this this partner's one of my very very best friends and we were partners a fabulous person. I mean, we were literally partners. And basically what happened was because I'm so strong and because even when I'm fully afraid like I was this morning, I'm going to barrel through and do it anyway. I finally said to you're her. You're going to do it fabulously. Oh, you're so sweet. <laughs> um, but I said to her, I said, you know, we're going to go our separate ways. And she didn't talk to me for a couple of months. So now it's been a couple of years. And she looked at me about six months ago and said, Wow you really must have loved me to let me go. Mm. And I burst into tears because, you know, I do do that. And, <laughs> and I thought, wow, and it's true. So please look at it that way, that if you are a business owner, if you're an entrepreneur, and you know that what's happening is that there's somebody who doesn't love their job or thinks that you're just being, you know, the person on top. And, you know, some people say it's really lonely on top. Here's what I'm going to tell you. It's not that lonely, and I welcome you. So when they say misery loves company, guess what? I'm a success, I love company, and I want you there with me. So with that being said, I just want to touch on another little venture that I've taken on. Uh, contrary to what someone told me this morning, like, why are you really doing this? Like, you don't really know what you're doing. Um, I decided that I wanted to speak better. And I know that radio and you know, standing up in front of an audience is a whole different venue. But last week, my dear friend Jenna, my other partner in crime, and I went to <laughs> Toastmasters. Toastmasters. Now, of course, I mentioned Toastmasters to Jenna, and then she went to this amazing seminar, and a whole bunch of people there were from Toastmasters. Now, yeah. not that she wouldn't have believed me on my own, but it didn't hurt <laughs> that all these very... It was literally like four days later. Yeah. So it was just really funny. Like I, It was fresh on my mind, and it wasn't that I wasn't interested, but it did help. It helped because... I was able to talk to them about it as members. No, it was fabulous. And then, of course, uh, you know, being from Minnesota. Minnesota. She, Minnesota. <laughs> she has this quality and this charm of Aww. a big, you know, big city girl with the, with the, the country height, which is probably Aww. who I am as well. So we I go on that. the Warner Brothers lot. <gasps> oh, my God, you guys. Okay, well, she just passed out. But we go on the Warner Brothers lot, and I told her that I will be coming there one day when she has her own show because that's what we're geared towards. And we did Toastmasters. We met amazing people there. And now we're going to become members, although they still haven't sent me no, my paperwork. No, they haven't sent the paperwork yet. Does but that that's mean, okay. That doesn't mean they don't want us, right? Because no. I'll, I'll just go there <laughs> I hope and not. cry. I'm, I'll, I'm showing up anyway. I was going to say, <laughs> I, neither one of you are the types where they say, please don't come. <laughs> They'll still show up. These girls will crash your wedding. I just want you to know that. <laughs> if we think it's going to be a movie fun? about that? <laughs> yeah. But those were guys, not girls. So here's what I just want to say in closing. Oh, yeah. And then while I was waiting for the people to show up at Toastmasters, because it started at 1230 and Jenna had to be there quarter to I'm 12. Sorry. Don't ask. I come five minutes later. She comes 45 minutes earlier. I but like her to ways, be prepared. Yeah, her way is the best way. So <laughs> while I was sitting outside, who walks in but Conan? And he's going upstairs. And I go, <laughs> so he works right above that area where Toastmasters is. I'm, uh, oh, of course, it was the Conan building. Love, Duh. Yeah, no, love. The best part yeah. is that there is a pedestal there that said WB on it. So now I have a picture for my vision board. What? <laughs> Awesome. And Anita, and that was interesting too. Are they going to throw us out now that they heard that maybe. I do this? Uh. Maybe, but that's okay. We're still going to go. Um, the interesting thing that I want to leave on, and I know we don't have that much time, is Anita and I were in this room by ourselves, right? And I'm afraid to break the rules. Like, I may Not look me. like... I'm a rule breaker, but I am terrified. Well, inside. you're hanging out with Anita. I know. So I'm like, so. oh my God, I want a picture behind that or it, by that pedestal. And she's like, pull it out. And I'm like, I don't want to get in trouble. She's like, do it anyway and get behind it. And like, she's staging this whole thing. And I'm petrified that we're going to get in trouble. But I loved it because you push the boundaries. You're like, what's the worst they're going to, they're going to say, don't do that. Right? That's right. I will never do anything illegal. Right. I really won't. But pushing the boundaries, how else I are you going to know where? the boundary is you right gone, but you see you push the boundaries but today you've gone from afraid to your typical fearless right uh, you've done that today i'm very very grateful for anyone hopefully there is someone listening but for anyone <laughs> and everyone listening, listening. hi oh, beth. beth 
Hi, Beth. <laughs> um, but definitely, I want to say thank you. I appreciate that there is a forum like this to do. I appreciate Linda, our amazing producer, both for Jenna and me. <laughs> I appreciate John. John, who's been absolutely wonderful and darling. And I really appreciate Anne for having taken the time to talk to me and say, would you consider a radio show? And she was just so calm and poised and lovely that I said, yeah, I don't know what that means, but I'm sure. So, <laughs> so just like pulling the podium or doing a radio show, you're only stopped by what you tell yourself you can't do. So welcome to Rich Life and see you next week.